Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. If you are brand new to the channel, uh, be courteous, you know, like, share, subscribe. Thank you very much for all the uh, support, the questions, the comments, and all the good folks that we get to uh, fortunately interact with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis via either social media, text messages, whatever the case may be. Anyway, thank you very much again for your support, spending a few minutes with us. And again, thank you very much for uh, joining us on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, yesterday, right, we talked about uh, the market was, uh, was not in a buy cycle, was not in a sell cycle. We were in a little bit of a distribution pattern, uh, kind of digesting the gains on the recent move and the re recent uh, successful reclaim of the 50-day moving average on the queues. And we talked about it last night in the video, how there might be a potential back test, uh, even as close to uh, retesting back the 50-day moving average, which was at one point was major supply and now is uh, major demand. That's exactly what we got today. It wasn't uh, anything more, uh, anything less. You could see here, uh, the queues had a nice little roundabout exhaustion cycle, uh, you know, held the five, lost the five today, traded down to the 50 day moving average, didn't quite get there, but close enough, uh, bounced that level. And you can see the same thing happen uh, with the SPY, uh, you know, again, came back in when it reclaimed the 50 day moving average to the upside, this handled to be support. And now the support became resistance and so forth and so on. And it reclaimed back the 50 day moving average putting in a nice little hammer in between. The only one that continues to be uh, you know, worrisome, uh, especially for the representation of speculation money is the IWM. The IWM lost its 50 day moving average today and today built uh, below in price uh, depreciation of the previous uh, day's range. Other than that, if you look at the Dow, uh, again, lost the 50 day moving average, lost, lost the 10, but put in a nice, uh, very nice hammer reclaiming back uh, the 10 and the 20 day moving average. And if you look at the final tally, not that bad at all. Okay, at one point, it did look uh, pretty gruesome, but the Dow uh, down about a half a percent, the S&P down about seven tenths of a percent, NASDAQ that was down, you know, about 250 points at one point, only finished down, I can't say only, but only finished down 1% uh, of the day, and the Russell continues uh, to bleed from losing the 50 day moving average. But if you look at the individual names, uh, for the exception of Apple, and we'll talk about that in a second, they kind of held serve, right? If you look at Meta, it kind of held serve. If you look at Microsoft, kind of held serve, right? And you could see that the, the names that were holding up prior to this pullback are still holding up as well. So if we do have a near term kind of a, an exhaustion, well, this is it, you know, this is the kind of the pullback we were looking for and we start grinding higher, you have to pay attention to Apple, excuse me, to Microsoft, you have to pay attention uh, to Meta as well. Even a name like Tesla, and again, uh, my day did not start out great today. Uh, I came in long, uh, I came in long Tesla, right? Came in long Tesla, uh, short queues. Uh, everything was actually good pre-market. Uh, I was up about $1.20 in the queues. Uh, Tesla actually went green on the day and I was like, wow, I'm gonna hit on both sides. Didn't work out that much. I wanted to lose it about uh, four or five bucks, five bucks on uh, foreign change on uh, on Tesla. Obviously the hedge helped out, so I didn't start the day uh, really, really well. However, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Uh, and the video came into our lives along with a couple of other names and it really saved the day, but it was a very hairy start, at least from the beginning. But it really does show you how even the strongest names, when they do pull back, they're pretty violent. But the good news is even on a name like Tesla, the same way we compared it to Meta and compared it to Microsoft, it held its range, right? It definitely held its range and reclaimed back, uh, held the 20 day and reclaimed back uh, the five and reclaimed back the 50 day moving average. So if we do get uh, kind of, um, a resumption of upward bias tomorrow, you know, keep an eye on Tesla, keep an eye on Meta, keep an eye uh, on Microsoft. You know, there's a downside to this as well, right? Not every single name uh, held serve. Look at Apple, Apple got really beat up today. You know, it was definitely uh, one of the catalysts for the one and a half, you know, 1.1% 1, 1 1 sell off today in the NASDAQ. And you have to actually, if you, have, if you take a step back and you actually think about this, if 
Apple wasn't down seven today, right? Um, you know, almost seven points in the day. The Nasdaq would probably be up on the day. That's how strong the rest of the groups were. And this is, and if this was, you know, two, three, four weeks ago, we were below the 50 day moving average and Apple put in a day like this, we would be down a lot, right? So it really is kind of a, a testament how strong the majority of names held. Now, can they get weaker? Of course they get weaker and, these, and this is the key, right? Now that we know that the NASDAQ reclaimed the 50, came to a back test, held the 50 today on a successful back test, obviously the 50 day moving average is now the line in the sand, right? And like I said in last night's video, the longer we continue to build back above the 50 day moving average, the higher probability, especially in the next couple of days, if we go out and take out today's ranges to the upside, that's gonna be a big green line to say that it was a successful back test we're taking out the previous day's channel, we're taking out the previous day's high, everything is good, the majority of stocks held, and now we're resuming our move successfully uh, after we took out uh, initial supply on the 50 day, uh, which was about four days ago. So ultimately, uh, pretty good stuff. Um, a lot of names were a mess today, right? A lot of names, and we'll get to the pivots in a second, but again, it, it's the saga of AMC, and, and, and I get how this whole thing started it was a whole FOMO trade with uh, GameStop. When GameStop went to 300, AMC went to 70. And you know, investors, well, at least investors at that time, they got long the stock. And you know, it's going to 300. You know, until it didn't, right? And you know, when they went from 70 back to 50, back to 20, you know, all those you know all those traders became investors. And now they became a cult because what's the difference? You know, if you're long the stock at 40, 50, 60, 70, what's the difference uh, if, where the stock is? So the stock traded down to all the way down to $2. Uh, if you guys remember, it did a reverse split, went to 15, 16 bucks. And then today they decided to uh, issue 40 million shares, which is not a good thing. It's more dilution. And the stock broke down. Again, congratulations. We'll get to the pivots in a second. And they were coming for the seven and a half, uh, $8 puts. Uh, for this week, for next week, uh, and the weirdest part about it. Speaking of the mo you know these um, uh, these names, Game Stock actually came out with you know okay, okay numbers. The stock is actually up about six to seven percent uh, after uh, after hours. Does it mean the stock will hold up? Who the hell knows? But the point is, guys, don't fall in love uh, with the trade. Right? Uh, if you get stuck in the trade, you're not supposed to be a shareholder. You're not supposed to go to the shareholders meeting when you're wrong in a trade. You're wrong in the trade. So, for example, this morning, you know, I came in long for Tesla, right? I was wrong. The stock took out the opening range lows. I sold it, went down another five dollars. I'm not sitting there trying to hope it comes back. I'm using common sense. If it uses loses a previous range, open it loses opening, you know, opening range lows, you get out. And the problem is when you're you know, a retail investor, you know, you get stuck in one of these stocks and you're saying to yourself, well, let me see what happens tomorrow. Tomorrow turns into let me see what happens next week. Next week turns into well, let me see what happens next month. The next thing you know, it's a cult. We're not leaving. So, guys, there's a difference between having a losing trade, right? Like Tesla for me was a losing trade, right? It was a losing trade. I gave back uh, some of the money from yesterday. It was a losing trade, but it's not a loss. A loss is when you're sitting there and you have no course of action, you have no idea what's going on, you're looking for a lifeline, you're hoping to God, you're praying to God, you're hoping something's gonna save you and it turns into your ultimate demise. So again, guys, remember, there's two different things. There's a losing trade, right? That's called the cost of doing business. Everybody has them, everybody has them a lot. And there's something called giving your money away and taking a loss. And unfortunately, uh, if you are not, um, you know, if you don't know the difference in the two, you're going to realize, because again, keep this in mind, guys, there's absolutely no reason. And I don't have a position on this thing. Okay. I know a lot of guys, a lot of people in the webinar still have runners uh, from this morning. I don't have a single share of this thing. So I don't have a dog in the fight, but keep this in mind. There's no reason why this thing can't drift all the way back down to the bottom of the Bollinger Band. So again, guys, again, especially for new traders, don't, don't fall in love with the stock, okay? Don't fall in love with the story. Don't fall in love with somebody on social media telling you it's the next best thing to slice bread. Have a plan, right? If the stock doesn't work, either use the previous day's low, the previous range low, the previous 60 low, but have some sort of safety net. No, don't, you know, don't turn uh, a bad trade into a horrible investment and ultimately uh, your, your ability to stay solvent. So just kind of my, um, you know, kind of two cents uh, for the day. Uh, so let's talk about the pivots, right? Let's talk about the pivots today. Again, uh, Tesla today uh, took a piece of my soul. It's okay, <laughs> made it back. Um, you know, Meta. You know, Meta not a big move at all. It took out the 302, traded up. You know, traded up to like 303 
uh, and change and then it got slammed. But it, again, it actually held. Um, it actually held pretty nicely. Uh, AMD obviously didn't confirm. PBR, uh, this is the highest close in PBR in the whole formation, but really didn't do anything. Uh, Lululemon, I'm still waiting for that 407 uh, area to confirm, which is the earnings highs. And here you had some, you know, here you had some plays. Obviously, this was the big one for me, uh, but Crowd 167 needs to build. Uh, Crowd actually had a nice little pop and then every, obviously everything came in. Uh, but you know, crowd got above the 67, put up like a dollar and change move, actually held up very well. And this is the highest close in the whole formation. Again, that's kind of my point of a lot of names are, are able to hold up despite the market coming in about, you know, a little over 1% today. Uh, Microsoft didn't confirm, had a big move yesterday, had a really good trade on this thing yesterday. This is what saved me. You know, NVIDIA definitely saved me today. If it wasn't for NVIDIA, I would have had a cra really crappy day. Uh, 478.60, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, NVIDIA got slammed, got absolutely slammed. It lost the 10-day moving average, uh, went down. My lowest cover, our lowest cover was about seven, which was great, um, which was absolutely great. But it traded down. Uh, it traded down roughly around, you know, traded down roughly around uh, at one point about 19 points. Really, really good move. Uh, I'm going to continue to watch this thing. You know, it didn't rally at all. Okay, it didn't rally at all. Uh, if it loses the 20 day moving average in the next couple of days, this thing has more room down. Again, remember, this thing had a big, big run. And again, despite seeing really big option flow in the name, price action is price action. It's either going to confirm or not. So uh, we watched it today, uh, you know, through the 10 day moving average, definitely saved my day. Uh, and then obviously I'm going to watch it tomorrow through the 20 if it can confirm as well. Uh, definitely the move of the day. And I didn't take this trade just because it's just really not my thing. I know a lot of you guys uh, did take it in the webinar. Congratulations. 1070 uh, AMC if it builds below can flush for a multi-day move. And then we started seeing uh, nine and a half weeklies, nine weeklies, eight and a half weeklies, seven and a half weeklies, seven and a half for next week. AMC got crushed, absolutely crushed. Congratulations for you guys are still uh, holding runners. I mean, look at this thing. This is, look at the 60 minute view, lost the 70, just, just went absolutely, here is a 60 minute view, uh, lost the 1070, and just went straight down, straight down. Uh, all these all these put buyers got paid, the nines, the nine and a halves, uh, the eight and a half stock traded all the way down to 843. Again, this thing starts confirming uh, today's lows tomorrow. You could have more uh, downside pressure. So again, you know, the market is wild. The market's wild. Um, I'd like to see maybe Tesla wakes up in the next couple of days, but at least now we have a two-sided range on Tesla. We have a bottom range here that we're watching to the downside. We have a top range that we continue to watch uh, to the upside as well. And again, there's no there's, there's no revenge trading. I'm not on a mission. I have to trade it tomorrow. I don't have to do anything. That's the whole point. You wait for uh, you wait for uh, technical areas of choice. You wait for them to confirm. Hopefully, some option flow will come into that direction. Short term, uh, out of the money flow. And the price action confirms and it's a seamless, uh, seamless result. But we'll see. You know, we'll see about that. So, guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Stay patient. Stay solvent. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.